award uh, grant. Um, but pay attention, set up a scientific review, even though they don't award any money, they're very important. I'm going to talk about them in a few minutes. So those of you who are just starting this journey of thinking about grant writing, keep in mind this is not for the faint of heart, um, unfortunately, in that um, it's, it's a process. Like you learn to write for publication instead of learn to how to write it's not, it's something you just cannot write and get published. It really is a, a process. So um, it, it, it's a learned skill, it takes time, and um, it's just something that takes a while. And the best thing to do is to learn from someone who is going to do so. So if you're interested, there's 10 tips that you want to think about as you begin this journey. You want to start early. You want to have a good or fantastic idea. And that's something that you want, if, if it gets funded, it's something that you want to be passionate about because it may, it may shape your career. Uh, you need to do something that you really want to get excited about and you become the person that does the research on that in the lawsuit. Um, use the NIH webpage. What, what I mean by that is go to those institutes, get to know those institutes that would fund your science. So if you're interested in, in substance abuse, you can go to NIDA, which does the drug abuse. Or the National Institute of Alcohol and Alcohol, Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, that's NIAAA, depending on what your area is. There's lots of different institutes, so make sure you get to know their mission and their research priorities. That'll help you align your application with what we want to fund. Uh, identify collaborators and seek advice and feedback from colleagues. Keep in mind, it's not a competition, at least at the early stages, not. You want to have mentors, collaborators, you're building your research team, and they will help you. If you don't include them, it's probably not going to work well. So starting out that way early is really important. The next one is to prepare a specific aim page. That's critical, and you'll have that in your application. It's a one-page primer kind of setting the stage of what, what you need to know the background, why, the purpose of your study, and what are your specific aims and the design that you're planning to um, to conduct. Then, there's this notice in red, talk to your program officer. <laughs> You'll see this again and again. The reason you want to do this up front, after you have the specific aims paper, you send it to us via email, set up a phone call, or you know, for us, a time for us to talk, because you, you're, you may have a great idea, but you're funding it already. And you don't want to waste taxpayer money funding two or three of the same study. We can help you try to shape it to address a new angle on something that we're already funding. The other thing is that we, we know if there's something the pipeline that can be funded. You may not, you might say, oh, this is brand new, it's not an NIH reporter, and we know it's probably going to be funded to someone else that's on the ground. So it's really important you talk to us. Providing a good oral and written presentation when you talk to us, you know, having a really strong draft form, so it just feels like it's, 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 it's not polished yet, but it's really a uh, strong uh, chart of talent to kind of uh, shape your study. Uh, but also a good verbal presentation because that's just going to help you with the written part. Um, and then align it with the review criteria. I'll just go over that in a minute, but it's typically significant investigator uh, approach, approaches, innovation, and uh, environment. And then <laughs> learn about the peer review process, and that's something that we're going to talk with you about in a few moments. So when I say plan early, we're talking about like having babies on an early nine months. So, you know, here's generally, here's kind of what, what, you know, what are, is the environment that you are in, the university, will they support you? you know, do you have mentors in this, in this case? Um, if not, you go on the NIH board and find that. Um, and then you try to get your ideas and you get your team together, set up your own review committee, you begin to write and shape and draft your, your application, get feedback. And then you, you around in here, you want to call us. Actually, you probably want to call us when you're here. Um, but you, you can call us a couple times. Uh, if you can't, if we don't have time, we'll, we'll read it and weigh in. But we want to help you succeed. That's our goal. And then you, you, you would submit it. So let's say we're in April now. June would be the next, there's typically three rounds, February, June, and October. So June, that means you start in October. So again, it's a Question, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she, and she said, this is related to if you're going in like for a PAR or an investor in the 
But oftentimes the RFAs come out with one month to turn around. <laughs> and, and so that's the reality of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure I was an early investigator to understand that those are amazing opportunities because there's money put aside for that. But they often are very short turnaround. Actually. I'm not sure why. But you raise a good point. Yeah. I mean, chances are if, if you're going to be inviting more senior folks to right. apply. So that you know, and that's why in a way we're really hearing is the, the junior, junior yeah. folks. But you're right, absolutely right. You do want to have junior folks involved in this. But yeah, that throws the uh, timeline out there. They get it typically. You try to get it up to 45 to 90 days ahead of the timeline. The timing. So um, and that's an RFA is kind of a one-time shot. But something new has come up, and they really want to get jump start funding. So when do you look? To be planned. This is the ideal framework. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, where do you find out about FOH? What is an FOH? You know, funding, funding opportunity announced. Very, very perfect. Yes. So that's um, you know, that's that's where you find out what the specific funding opportunity announcement is, and we have them on our website. Uh, so you'll go on each, let's say you're interested in mental health, you go on our website. We have a list here you can sign up for, all the institutes do. So you want to sign up for that list if you can. And then you get these notices. You don't have to constantly you know, search the web all the time. But you'll see which notices come up, which new funding announcements come up. And typically something comes up, it's usually on Friday, something can come up. So that's uh, something you really want to do. I just wanted to kind of give you some quick examples of funding, uh, you know, funding mechanisms uh, that generally are the common ones that are from the smallest to the largest. So if you have um, secondary data analysis, that's kind of our most proved uh, probably. Um, and this parent grant is specifically, so you can do R03s or two year grants, a little bit of money. But if you have some secondary data analysis, it's looking at an area that we don't have anything in, or we have very little research that's been done. That's the way to go. Uh, R21 is for novel, new, old ideas. Again, two year grant, a uh, little bit more money, 250000 uh, 275000 um, And then R34 is for pilot studies. So that's something with a little bit of data already, but you're looking at testing the effectiveness or efficacy of. And that's kind of a smaller group. Doesn't mean you have to have the statistical power built in, but you're looking for an effect size. You get a signal that this is the intervention or this. What we call it, the, the target the mechanism of change that we can uh, manipulate. Um, so that's a smaller 450,000 for th up to three years. And then the big kind of the big kahuna, you know, the gold standard is the R01, and that's about a half million dollars a year for four to five years. And those are the big studies where we're looking at developing and testing new approaches and comparing, probably comparing your intervention to some not as treatment as usual, but people getting better. Individuals getting something, uh, uh, maybe a smaller dosage of an intervention to see does, it, does this new intervention work. And then I'm adding the U19 because it fits the, what uh, Andrea's group uh, funds quite a bit, and that's a cooperative agreement. And that's a different angle, kind of. It's a research grant, which is an award, but because it's also a contract, the, the federal folks are also partners with you. <laughs> It's not like you just give you the money like an R, one of these R's and you go and do it, but this is where we're involved in the constantly changing. But these are big, big study grants as well. So uh, this is a nice place for that. Any questions for you? Yeah. yeah, so I'm wondering if I could just quickly uh, do a the analysis of R3 and R21. Is there a sense when there might be taking the data analysis for the R21? It depends. I mean, you know, some of these are dollars together. It just depends. Yeah, that's where you call. You put a you put a specific age paper together, and then you call a program officer. Um, and then if I'm, let's say you find me on the web, it looks like oh, it looks like this is Danny's area research. If it's not, that's okay. You and I will figure out together who's the best person. And you can't make any wrong, you know, there's no wrong things here. But we want to help you find the right program officer to help you shape it, and they will help you. You would build it as an R03 or an R21. Yeah. Um, so um, our department, actually, our, I think maybe the school was, uh, our department does an analysis of funding and found that the R21s were extremely limited in funding and it's now not allowed us to apply 
without this like certain approval. Obviously, if they are if the only mechanism is not trying to watch it like someone else in our um, And I'm curious what, what your sense of that is from an IMH perspective. Are you seeing study sections not letting you know as of over um, critical of them or we we are yeah. finding um, you know uh, quite a few of uh, you know there's a parent are coming like now that they're not interested in this one yeah. yeah. So, so but we shift we shifted the parameter. Uh, we are we are pushing people more for the more mm -hmm. more I But there's a number of different funding opportunities to do around the park fund. Like that uh, this round I have a couple of arts and like um special interest in. So uh, I think the answer depends on what this is this to do mm -hmm. in the there's an important mechanism for junior faculty yeah, and for that students frustrating. Well, um, there's a tool that's kind of clamping down on that. But, yeah, I guess it's sort of resource cost benefit analysis for them. If their grants keep up, they do the same amount of work they were right. in, and they're saying, like, you know, like, it, it, I mean, again, people's maybe around table style study sections. I, I do find sometimes the SROs are saying, this is not an ROI, like, to the reviewer. Right. You know, we're trying to remind them not to review them with that. That's a, you know, that's that they're different, and that um, that seems to be part of the challenge. At least again, in my anecdotal experience, but, but others to a study section said similarly that that the reviewers are not necessarily looking at these, you know, that you know, through an appropriate lens. <laughs> you raise a very good point. The, the thing is, we do want we want to fund not <clears throat> new ideas, yeah. and you, know, you want to do it in a way that you don't really. Uh, this is a lot of money doing so. Our mm -hmm. money one is, is one of the smaller uh, mechanisms that can do that. So um, we talked quite a bit about uh, that, that they probably well, I'll show you. So we'll what we should do actually an yeah. institute analysis on it. I don't really yeah, yeah, and you, yeah. you, you yeah. can do that on our NIH report. report on yeah. 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 But just gives you a, a sense of that. Um, and then again, next steps, you know, make sure you go to Please go to the website. So this is your best way to find out not just what our missions are, but what our priorities are and our strategic plan. No boring, but again, this is the way um, to find out what our priorities are. NIH reporter, who, who does not know what this is? It's a great tool. Oh, you're going to love it. It's a great way to search on anything we find it. And, and then it can connect you to other types of studies that are similar. And then this way you can. You can connect you know, all the emails, the details about the abstract, the publications as a result of that study, um, and a lot of people, um, you know, network through that. Um, make sure, you know, so your next identify potential FLAs, talk to this program officer. We've seen that a couple times now, right? <laughs> um, and partner with the people. This is really, really critical. So let me just quickly touch on the grant submission process. Some of you already know this. Um, they take, uh, we, we, we have grant review uh, cycles three times a year, so if you're in October, it's that nine month window again. Uh, uh, it gets to award in July if you're lucky. Uh, and then if you submit in February, it's the second order kind of time frame. And then June. Now, uh, HIV grants are a little different. They're like, I think it's May, January, and um, September. But you know, they, 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 and it all goes to CSO. So it takes nine months, and then you guys, you might be saying, well, geez, that's a lot of work. What does it take so long for? Well, this is why <laughs> when you, you know, remember nine months ahead, you're getting your idea, you submit it, let's say in, G in June, um, then it goes to the Center for Scientific Review. Remember, I pointed them out earlier. They handle about 80,000 applications a year. About a hundred people touch, you know, whether it's by email or not, they touch your application throughout this process and try to get it to the right study section and then identify the right reviewers with the right expertise. So there's lots of things going on. And then, so this part takes a long time. Then it goes to the review, it is discussed, there's a discussion, if it's not discussed, that's okay, you still will get a summary statement. Then, once you get your impact score, then we get it. Your Andre and I get it. And then we have to go through all these big process. We just had started our division yesterday, where you you look at what where's the scientific gap? Does this address what we are interested in? That's why you can find out what our research priorities are. You've got a leg up on what we are interested in funding. Um, and then we start saying, here's what we're interested in. So it takes a while. We have to present to our, our director, our at NIH, Josh Gordon. 
and that's the evaluating of the program relevant. Then if it's still, if your application is still on our list, there's more, because to our advisory council, they need to see that for you. That's like our board of directors that they have to make, each institute has them. But then there's still one more step. So if everyone says green light, green light, green light for your study, there's still a, a, a final piece to make sure it goes in the, you know, there's a each, you know, if each uh, scientific um, uh, area is addressed, and then we have enough money. Because sometimes money budgets change and it's only that one. Then, if you're lucky, I try to take money. <laughs> so hopefully that helps clear up a little bit of the mystery. Um, there's just a couple more uh, uh, slides on the review process. When you write your application, you are writing it to meet five core criteria that you're writing about significance. You are you are you the best person to do this? That's you're going to be talking about your publication history, stuff like that. Um, innovation, you know. Remember, we want to fund new science. We're not funding um, stuff that we've already funded. It's your taxpayer dollars. We want it to go to things that are really going to move the science forward in mental health and drug abuse, you know, reducing these areas. Uh, your approach is the biggest section that people get dinged on, and that you know that that you get uh, not to get scores on. We're making sure you have a theoretical framework, a design methods and analysis, statistical analysis, the data power, the have effect size, and then does this institution, NYU, provide the support um, for you to conduct the study? Will it be responsible? And then you get a final big score. So about uh, three, to, three to six weeks later, you'll get a summary statement. And typically, your impact score will um, actually uh, impact score you should get within 48 hours, um, and that will be in, in, in each institute's different about what's fundable. Typically, 25 or under is good. One is the best score, 90 is the worst. Um, so you're trying to get the lowest you can. Um, and this is just a summary statement for all applications includes not just that impact score, but remember the significant score. Investigated for each to get a separate score for that as well. And then they'll in some instances they'll have to transfer resources to each of those criteria. So if you get when you get your summary statement, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna feel horrible to read it. It's just, you know, it's just good. But remember, folks really work hard to um, to give you a fair evaluation of you. And if you can you submit, you will have a stronger application that around it. So it's a scientific of what and, and then make recommendations. So please, 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 you know, wait a few days before you call program officers um, and talk to your team and then figure out, okay, how do I turn this into positive? So just lastly, you know, important to understand your agency mission, be aligned with that and, and, and um, you know about each institute. Make sure you get your collaborators and teams together. Learn and practice the skills of grant writing and understand the peer review process. And then learn to contact us. <laughs> we will, we're here to help with our job. And please submit applications. Okay? So, what I want to do now, after we've got this information, to shift into one of the main reasons, primary reasons we work on it, is to tell you about our, um, our uh, Institute's uh, DNI mission um, and, and our portfolio. So, this is our mission. And we have a strategic plan. And when you, I tell you, you know, the cover basic science all the way to applied science, and that's where the I fits in, is over in the services research and, um, and implementation science area of the, of the pipeline, including with, uh, what Andrea does. But when you write your application, you're going to add this one sentence. This application is responsive to strategic plan objective 4.2 establish research partnerships, use of dissemination, implementation. You can fit it into any of these, but chances are, if you do an implementation science application, that is probably one of for you to consider adding that sentence. It shows the reviewer that you plug in to our research priorities. It also shows up that you understand you know, our scientific mission. So we've got a new director, or I'll be called the new director. He's been there for three years now almost. Um, and his, his is a uh, focus. He, he wants to see applications of rigor. Will the study be definitive? Uh, impact, how much will the study change the field? 
innovation? Will this study shake things up? And investigators, what do the scientists bring in the field? So, Donna, this kind of speaks a little bit to the kind of spirit in our 21. He was really excited about new ideas. So, in our industry, we are wanting to be, you know, moving science to areas we want to care. So, this is just something for you to think about. So, when you think about DNI research, I can tell you, yeah, we really support it, but you follow the dollars. So, <laughs> The great news is NIMH is, you know, has 31 percent, and this is just um, from 2002 to 2016. In fact, my colleagues at NHLBI, um, the Cheryl Boyce, they did a, re a, 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 had a contract to do a review, and they uh, shared their findings with us. So back up, this is just uh, the R01 telephone. Those are those big, big studies we were talking about. So 68 million dollars in R01 study for the DNI research from NIMH, and then NCI is just a, a touch behind, um, and then NHLBI is, is coming up uh, there. They're now um, conducting quite a bit of research, and it, this is the um, Institute of uh, Allergies and Infectious Diseases, and then NIDA is also doing part of that. So um, this is, uh, you know, it's, the goal, the reason I show you this is it really shows our commitment by dollars to this area. Um, it's only, and it's growing, it just is growing. So at NIMH, I just wanted to show you right now, I was, this is in May, the active grant, we had 24 active grants that came through this one study section, it's called the Dissemination and Implementation of Research and Health Study Section. So all they review are the NI grants, they don't really ever do other ones. But that, this, is, this is all they do. So we have 24 active grants, and this is the general theme. You know, uh, the RCTs, cognitive CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. We have some looking at school based treatment, health services access. So there's 24 of those. And just the ones that were funded in 2000, um, we had nine new ones funded in 2017 and 18. These were the general themes of those, um, those, those grants that were funded, which just gives you an idea of the areas that were funded, GNI research. So of those, from those 24 I've been telling you about, 24 that the DNI reviewed, we had uh, seven R21. Uh, of course, most of them were the, the R01. And we have a funky thing called an R56. But um, the gist is that we're also looking at the publications that come out of the research. What's the science? You know, now that you conduct this additional the research, what, what publications are you doing? And how are you, you know, disseminating? The findings out into the field. So this is kind of a neat, uh, a new, you know, showing the strength of it, kind of the um, the differences of the portfolio. There's another new area that we're getting many more DNI research uh, being conducted, and these are the hybrid designs. And we're having since 2014, we're having new um, new studies come through, and so we have uh, 15 other studies that are conducted hybrid design. And so it's, it's not just these now. In the last five years, we've got a whole new cadre of DNI research that we're funding. And How, by hybrid, you mean? For folks that aren't familiar with it, uh, Jeff Curran wrote an article in 2012 uh, on the different types of hybrids. And it's a way to kind of accelerate research in, you know, uh, testing effectiveness research. And the hybrid one is where you test in, in <coughs> you might manipulate the actual intervention of the testing the effectiveness of the treatment, but you're observing uh, characteristics or features in the implementation process. In a hybrid two, you're manipulating the intervention uh, of factors, but you're also intervention the implementation strategy. So this one is just the effectiveness you're manipulating. This is your implementing full effectiveness and implementation. And then the third, the hybrid three, is where you're only manipulating the implementation strategy, but you're observing your clinical outcomes. So it, since he uh, published this in 2014, that's when all of our, our studies, in, in a certain uh, clinical trial demo, was began to come through. And it's really grown up. Well, it's a way, instead of having two separate R01s that take four or five years each, you can get findings finished in four or five years to very different points. So we're really excited about the hybrid, the feature coming through. 
So of those uh, sort of applications, uh, we've got these are the things of, of those, but the neat piece is that people in K awards, that's the career development awards, and others, folks are planning to come up super hybrid. So we can really see um, a great future in that. We're really excited about that. And it's not just, uh, we have other, the clinical trials FOAs, which I'll tell you about in a moment, but a lot of folks are conducting research in other areas at NIMH. Andre's going to talk about the Global Mental Health Scale, scale of Hub, and our Lackerty Center, Advanced Laboratories for Accelerating Research and Impact of Treatments for Youth and Adults with Mental Illness, and many other employers you see group hybrid. So DNI research isn't just that we're using it, it's all over our portfolio, and that's really exciting to see. A couple different examples, you know, Hybrid One, Ken Ruggiero is doing a trauma study, um, improving quality care. So he's just never just manipulating the effectiveness. He's looking at the implementation variables. Uh, Christina Studs and Mary McKay used to be just down the street. Um, she, you know, they're doing type two, so they're, 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 they're manipulating the effectiveness of their treatments and the implementation strategies. And then Lauren Brooklyn, Frizzi, and Alvin Summer are doing the three. So they're just they're manipulating the uh, implementation strategies. One's doing it in the school, Alvin's doing it in the school, and uh, Lauren is doing it in the mental health school and NGT. So those are the at different methods and strategies in implementation science to test organizational approaches. We learn what's the impact of learning collaboratives. Also, we're looking at uh, organizational strategies that change the culture and climate. Adaptive implementation interventions. Amy Kilborn's going to smart design, where they're sort of titrating various different, uh, <coughs> different uh, dosages of a treatment. Um, and then family navigators, that's an area that we're, we're very interested in. How, uh, what are the components? What are the unique components of a navigator that really enhance the outcomes? Hybrid design, we've already talked about. Tools and technologies, we have a couple of folks you know, looking at various portals, um, uh, algorithms, natural learning processing, uh, telehealth. And the implementation is one that's an area of interest to us. A lot of the treatments aren't working and they have iatrogenic effects. Well, how do you unhook that from? Your, your standard care and put in one that you think has the potential to be in a safe practice. So that process is not always as easy as it sounds. And then early detection of autism and, uh, uh, and uh, SMI or uh, serious emotional disturbances among kids. Um, well, let me just kind of end here a little bit with the funding opportunity announcements for DNI researchers. As I mentioned, this is that trans NIH funding opportunity announcement that's open for everybody. And there's 22 institutions and centers, including NIMH that's signed on. And there's the, R, there's the R21 right here. So that's part of that package. And that's, you know, that used to be the only way DNI research came to us. Now our clinical trial funding opportunity announcement that we have, this is where all the hybrids are coming through. And which, when you think of a hybrid effectiveness and implementation study, that, see how that, effectiveness work, <laughs> that sets it up beautifully to conduct hybrid. So at NIMH, we require you to, um, to identify targets or mechanisms of change. Um, and that's kind of a new approach. This is something we've been doing since 2014. And again, it's just the mediators. We want to know what is it that you're tinkering with if you're testing an intervention. So that's something that we're having folks uh, make sure they have that in their studies. We have many FOAs. These, these are six FOAs that you can embed hybrid designs in to conduct uh, implementation science. And if you have any questions about them, let me know. And now, so if you're, this is interesting for you, if, if you find this is an area you want to do more, um, learn more about, go to this conference in DC. How many of you have even kept on to this? Great, great, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a great conference. You learn about all the things that we're funding. And you get to meet scientists. They have a lot of kind of uh, DNI 101 seminars in there. And there's a technical assistance workshop at the uh, very end of the conference. And you know, uh, last year, Andre and I were there. Um, 
and you can uh, participate in that. And so it, it's just a wonderful, uh, wonderful way. And then in 2009, it is December 4th through 6th down in the D.C. area, not far as Arlington, Virginia. So put that on your calendar. There are other trainings that you may want to think about. They're highly competitive. This one's more broad. It's very trans uh, diagnostic uh, disease. Or and it's not just mental health, it could be for any any um, uh, area of research. But you know, we call it TIDER. And that's something that is competitive that you can apply. And we typically accept about 50 folks a year, get probably about three times that many applications. And the Implementation Research Institute, very highly competitive. I hope Foster runs that. Um, about, they accept about 10 folks. But they are the ones that uh, she says she uh, she expects them to be leaders in the field. So and that they're the folks that are getting quite a bit of funding at this point, to be honest with you. And then lastly, um, there's lots of other areas you can go to to get some um, information about DNI research. David Chambers and his group at NCI they have webinars and they're, they're archived. So if you can't watch them in real time, go to them and watch them. It gives you an idea of all the different. You know, issues in the DNI research that folks are interested in. And then, of course, there's the Implementation Science Journal and the most recent uh, Brownson, Colbitz, and Proctor, um, Proctor uh, uh, textbook. So let us know if you have questions. We are here to, you know, we would tell you all the way to meet you. We're here to help. We want you to do well. And now what I'd like to do is shift it over to Andrea, who's going to talk about the global mental health research piece. Good morning, everybody. So, thank you again. Uh, me and Denise, we are working together. And so, as she was saying, I'm I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Simulation Limitation Science program uh, that, in fact, that was launched a few months ago, three, four months ago. So, it's quite new inside of this, the global mental health. Uh, so, what I'm going to, um, I, came, I came here also to hear from you what are the needs, because we are just building the program. So, we want to expand. So, the more we listen also from outside, the better we're going to be able to launch new ideas. And uh, so I, I, it was helpful that we need already give you a very good glance about NIMH process. So probably some of the slides here is going to be the same. So I just, and the slides are going to be, we're going to be able to share with you. So I'm going to, so just to like to hear just like an information about how much we invest. I don't have an idea how much NIH is investing in, in, in research. Yearly. And then and it, 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 you can take a look at how that, and, and of course, some of you are not familiar, and we know that we have the extra mural. That's the money that we put it outside for you all um, to uh, fund amazing research. And then only 10% stay inside NIMH. So, and so for some people who may not know, NIMH has those institutes inside and where they are running also research in different the 27 institutes. But most of them are outside now, and here we are. Uh, and again, some is like, but I also I want to emphasize, because maybe some of you, I don't know, some of you are in the global arena, uh, but our office of the, the Center for Global Mental Health, a few months ago, has shifted. So we were part of the Office for Research on Disparities and Global Mental Health, that is part of the NIMH, one of the offices inside of the NIMH. So that's how we, and the Office of Disparities, I was the Chief of Mental Health Disparities uh, last year. And then in October, there was a shift inside the institute. And we, our global mental health portfolio, portfolio known program itself became a center. So now we are the center for global mental health. I'm just showing you this, just so you some people can get confused on the website. So this is the new website. So now we are part of the Center for Global Mental Health. And, and we are expanding, and that's why now we have a program on dissemination implementation science and research in global mental health. And we, so in the, in the way that the, our institute did it, we are embedded together with the division of aid research. 
So NIMH has the extramural, what I was saying, has different divisions. The division where we did the division of service, service intervention research, and then there is the division of uh, basic science, the GNBDF. There is the division of translation research, and then there is now there is a division of aid research. The division of aid research inside the NIMH do some research that is related to mental health and behavior uh, changes for people who are with HIV. And now we are working together with them because they are the ones who have more a huge portfolio of global mental health, global health. Mm -hmm. So now so we are working together with them, but we have a separate budget and we have our separate directors also. But just so you can, as you look around, you're going to find this. So and now, so uh, we became a center last year in October as we're extending our 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 portfolio. Uh, most of our research has been in public doing as we need to point out, this is our the, the four strategic objectives for NIMH. And most of what we have been founding is prevention and cure and public health impact. But now we are also going to be expanding the global mental health portfolio all the way from basic science all the way to public health impact. So here certainly I'm going to be telling you a little bit more of the implementation science research. But I want you to also to first to learn and to, to be aware that there is chance and opportunity for global mental health research all the way from basic to implementation outside. So let me just show you a little bit of like the, some of the funding opportunities that we have right now. And for people who are planning to plan to, to apply for a global uh, opportunity, there is different ways that we can find it. And I think people have to be when it's to think, oh, I'm going to be applying for any other country in the world. Uh, what the first thing when you open the FOA is to look if you are eligible, right? So, and that's the way, that's where you have to take a look. You can either be an uh, institute outside that's going to be applying or it can be a, a foreign component. So, those are the two different ways that we can do it. And here is like a description of what exactly it means, a foreign component. It not can be only like having some little things outside. It has to be like somebody who is doing a little bit of the research over there or unemployed by a foreign institution. So there is a different language, different way to do it, but it's important for you to see if it's matched. Otherwise, you don't even lose your time because it's a lot of work. So we're going to see this in every announcement. So look at this. If it, if it is applied, then look who is the PO, as she was saying, the program official from that FOA. Forward. That's our job. We are just to help you to navigate in the NIA system that is very complicated. We also don't have so many answers at the same time. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to talk to somebody else. But we know how to navigate a little bit easier. So we can help you. And, and that's what we are for. We want to see you applying. So please call. And, don't, and, and again, also one thing, we receive so many emails and calls. So sometimes, you know, emails get like, we have we didn't see it. If we do not respond, please don't take it personally. Send it again next week, and then we're going to get it. And, uh, and then it's just saying, if it's, I'm not the right person, I'm going to be helping you to, to find the one. So as in the global mental health, we have, as she was saying, we have different ways of funding. We have our own initiatives. So I'm going to tell you some examples of that. And oh, oh, it is. Well, it was supposed to be having some examples. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. So here is our. Uh, we had like in the last five, seven years, a lot of new initiatives that the global mental health has launched outside. And this is our, our first cohort that we call when she was saying they are not grants, they are programs for women. That means there is a pro program official who is more of the administrative part of the grant who is going to be your, uh, working with you. But there is a project scientist also from NIMH who is going to be working with you as part of your scientific board. Um, and so that was the first, uh, the first time it was launched about seven years ago, those, this first cohort. So we're kind of launching uh, exchange, uh, some, uh, this one was more integrating mental health care in different areas in the world with different types of, of uh, opportunities. And most of them were using technologies that shifting, um, as you can see a little bit in different parts of the world. 
And then that was the initiative that started uh, five years ago, uh, three years ago. And that is like now what we are launching today. There is 11 hubs going on. Uh, this is a, and each one of them has a research question, a research study, and then they also have a capacity building component. That we believe it is important to help the, the countries to build their research capacity. And then most of them, so it's not all the countries that we, all the countries that are here involved, not it's only the ones that are having the research, but some of them also only have the capacity, capacity building. So another one that we do is that we work closely with poverty. So for, you, for some of you who haven't heard, poverty is part, it's one of the centers from NIH, from one of those 27 institutes, plus some few centers. Poverty is one of them, and they are responsible for all the uh, international agreements and, and, and opportunities around uh, with uh, uh, NIH. And they have their own announcement. So we sign in, so when we say that they, they they developed the uh, FOA, and we signed in said and said, oh, we want an NIH wants to have some grants from that. So, and we have, here is one opportunity that we have many of them. And this is a good one that dissemination organization science comes to offer for us. So, this is, uh, uh, this, so as you can see, it goes, this one goes all the way, looking all the way from basic science to implementation science, but this is a great opportunity, again, we uh, and this person, uh, Makita Williams, is the responsible. So please write to her. We will see some opportunities on that. Um, and some of that is going to come to me, but she's going to be kind of helping to you to, to figure out where to go. Another one is this one, uh, mobile technology. <laughs> this is also one of the new days are going to be just really, really easy, but it's about how to use mobile technology with mental health to be implemented in different parts of the world. Um, they also have some ones that are more effectiveness, some, more, some of them are more uh, implementation science, hybrid type 2, uh, hybrid type two, or 3. So this is a good way to go to. And then there is this, uh, there is also the ones that investigators initiated, right? And that uh, sometimes people think, oh, but there's not so many global mental health uh, opportunities. No, in fact, there are many. And then I, I would suggest you to, so this is the website. So go to the, our NIMH funding, and then if you go here, and you click the NIMH sponsor website. And here I just took a picture, but the, we have 60 now global mental health initiatives that can be formed. So all the way, going all the way to basic science, uh, all the way to implementation science. So take a look on them. I know it's a kind of it's a, it's a tough work, but then you can find something. And then if you're not sure, please call. And then we're going to be able to select, you know, oh, no, this one this doesn't fit too good, but you know what? That one fits too good. Uh, and then I just put it like some of, some of the uh, other opportunities that we have. That's sort of like an ongoing opportunity for a parent grant. No, so that's also if we can have a, a, a mental health opportunity for you. And then so I can, and we're gonna have those slides, so it's just like there's gonna be some ideas links for you to go on. So we also have like a dissemination implementation that we also mentioned. Uh, she was talking about the, the for the US, but we also use that one for our own for our football. And that was just a, a supplement that was just released recently. The deadline is May 22. So, so when you have a grant for somebody, to, for more than new people, sometimes when you have a, already an ongoing grant, you can ask for a supplement inside of your parents' grant itself. But then sometimes they release a new one, like a new. There is this opportunity, and you have uh, you can have by. In fact, this one is by May 22. Is the deadline? Uh, it's a one to two years as we restrict supplement in dissemination communication. So that's why it's very important for you to sign in. Okay. I'm sorry, quick clarification on this one. Is this to any attached to any ongoing or one or twenty one? From uh, we can I may just sign in on that one. So depending on the issue, right? So you need when you open it, just take a look which issue is signed in. Okay. When I mean sign in, then it, it, this notice was released by NCI. Uh, 
so it, when, when it is yeah, so depending, so it was released by somebody, I don't know who was, I don't remember which one, probably. Yeah. So, probably. So then, uh, then probably invite, oh, and I made, and then I'm really sure. do you want to come in? So that means that I'm saying, oh, I want uh, fund, I, I want application that can, that's going to be applying from this FOH. Got it. And then we'll specify the mechanisms that. Sorry? And then we'll specify the mechanisms that are one. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, take a look because this is a deadline to me. So and that's why I saw bring I brought this one and I thought of, and it is specific for DNI. Yeah, I just wanted to add that sometimes the, the time frame is a parent grant. Mm -hmm. So I think it's eighteen yeah. months. You know? Yeah, I don't remember yeah. exactly that way. Yeah, they have yeah. to also there's like a timeline right. depending yeah. how it's in three years left on our, our one, that's great. But like our twenty one you only got two years, so within the first couple of months. And there is a particular language, so there's a particular language that you're going to have to use to use that. I mean, you're going to use the administrative supplement to add a new, a new something. If something happened that you right. it had another need, right? Because why you're asking more money now? So there is a, a specific range that, that you need to use and see if it fits on your question. Because uh, we can, otherwise it's not going to be, it's not going to fight. Okay, but just related to this also, um, if the parent grant was uh, through, let's say, for example, NHLBI, the research that will come from NIMH has to also come from NHLBI. And so, yeah. But, it could be a mental health related. It could be, as long as you, you, it has to be within the scope of your parent. Yeah. 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 So there's a, but there's a question. Particularly if something come up, as Andre said, in, in, in you conducting this study of like, geez, I wish we knew this when we wrote this application because we're seeing this little pattern. And plus, typically they have phones that they're trying to stand up, but there's a way if you go to Master Street or Great Time that you want to get conducted and there's a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally I think the supplement you cannot change the scope, right? But there is a way, and and sometimes call your PO from NHBI, and they can talk to us too. So I I encourage this conversation between institutes also. Sometimes it's very helpful. Um, well, I had a question about the timing that you answered before about the eighteen months or two years, and I wondered whether beyond that. I mean, I get that, that if you're at the end. If you get a no cost extension, does that allow you to? No. Okay. I wish. Sorry. And is that a hard and fast 18 month thing, or does it occasionally go even into the last year of uh, an existing grant? I think it depends on the supplement. I know the one that we used to always do for 18 months. But some may have a small Yeah, I would say, yeah, because they change the rules for yeah. each one. So I, I first would open them and take a look. I don't even remember exactly that one. And we and we also get okay. Let me check because they as they change the rules are not. Yeah, the, 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 the goal is to spend the money within the lifetime of your first parent grant. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's the key. But um, sometimes you, you may apply by the time that you get funded. It's month that it's month nineteen. We work with it so that you certainly get it because it's it our fault that we were late. Is there any limitation about the number of supplements for the specific program? Like, you and I, how many supplements do you apply? Well, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, I, I know, I never heard about a limitation about it, but there is, it, it, there is a, we, the, this is, extra money comes from our bucket, so we have to kind of share it with a lot of people are asking, or you know, have three or four, we're going to have to also, certainly this science is a priority. But we also kind of uh, think about it in that sense. Normally, the administrative supplement range for one to two years. Uh, it's like it's a kind of an add on uh, opportunity. And we encourage that. We have in our U19 that I mentioned, we have many of them because they are also have like a one year formative research. And then in that formative research, a lot of new interactions coming in, a lot of new ideas. And then we add on, and it's a good thing for the time because you're already investing a lot of money on the, that big grant. So it's going to be, and again, talk to us. Talk to, no, 
I would never send a, a supplement without talking to your CEO. I mean, because that, and that, those are decent house uh, reviews. So it's going to be, so that's why the, the conversation with us is even more, uh, it's very important. And I would say, like what she's saying, you no, know, the chance for you getting a grant, you know, if you don't talk with your CEO, it, it, it is you. You know, because you probably not gonna know some information that is for everybody, but you're gonna have to, to go and ask us. You know, we are not preparation, so there is no privilege for anybody. But the information is there, you need to come and talk to us. See the, the report, see the being funded. So and then we can help you. Uh, and then there is some other funding opportunities that are put here for countries. Related. There is MOUs that NIH do with different countries. I just put it here. Two of them, one with Brazil, two of Brazil, and one with China, has just been uh, an hour. I was on um, the, um, the, the POC the, for this, those ones, that are, that's why I'm highlighting them. Uh, so there was just like 19 applications from institutes from China and NIH, half and half being funded from China, half and half from NIH. And they are just going to go to specific different study sessions, um, all the way from basic science to implementation. This is a more basic science. But, but they have like different opportunities. So if you sign in, you're going to find out there is much more opportunities that sometimes we don't know. Uh, and that depending on the country that you're working, I would encourage you to take a look on those. Uh, I'm thinking that there are few of those. And then I just uh, put it in some links for you, uh, and we're going to have them. I really encourage you to take a look. There are a lot of information, so I put in some of them that are very helpful about how to be looking, write, write your application, how to, how to, how to, to, to apply, um, and then inside the age, how you can subscribe, what the new release that we are doing, um, Global Health Matters, that's at from poverty, the new initiatives from poverty, um, and then the report that she mentioned about that's very helpful. You know, we can go to PubMed, be updated what's been published, but between being published and being researched, doing research, not that you have all this access to everything that's ongoing research at NIH. So you can have an idea to have, oh, what's the different flavor that I can, can, I can think about it in my new research that I'm going to propose that is different from what is already going on. So that's a very helpful tool, I think. So yeah, so that, those are more of the information that I want to share with you and the link and we're happy to show questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and make the first comment. Um, I, I think that this was a perfect presentation. But overall, I have to say that for ENI, and I and they have done a fantastic job when you show that first pie chart. I know when I was at NHLBR, we were all jealous of you guys. No, no. <laughs> Based on budget, we're you guys, we're team. Way <laughs> way. We are a team. We are a team. Let me just also, I think I, I skipped one slide that I want to, I don't know what happened in that slide, but these are the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is our portfolio from DNI right now. Just like a, but this is not it's unofficial. I have to say, I have to explain mm -hmm. very clearly. Uh, I just went to what and I like global mental health is doing right now, and those are the R ones, R twenty ones, and the training grants in all inseminations here. So, so just to have an idea. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. I thought this was incredibly helpful. Apologies for being here right at the beginning. Um, I have a question actually specifically about the C32. A few of us are discussing about trying to fit in the C32. We're thinking about actually the NHLBI and then we're putting on a ball, but uh, in the language. But I just was wondering, we were advised in the context of those conversations so far that we have with NHLBI that um, we should not explicitly be quote unquote. Either mission global or say that funds from the C32 would be used to support like foreign work. And so here it looks like you have what's the two C32 under your Center for Global Mental Health. 
Uh, but I know Columbia has actually uh, specifically global mental health. That's one, not, but that's one from Columbia. Yeah, and I'm just curious, how, are they institute specific these policies or I'm just wondering I, I, how that works? Yeah, I, um, I think she, she, I, would, I would say that it's a kind of a little bit specific uh, for, for each institute has its own way to address those things. You know, like, in a sense, global has always been sometimes challenged. Uh, although we understand that we, you know, whatever we're doing global is going to come back to the US. And in fact, we are kind of discouraging how to have this reverse translation, right? Kind of, uh, and we have many examples of that. So in our, in our portfolio for the C32, uh, the person who is, uh, and I can give you the name, and who can actually just dish my out, works with us closely, is in the center. Uh, we, we use the word global. It will affect our census for work. Uh, but but I, I would definitely, if you're going to an NGOB, I insist uh, saying that I, I would go. But if you're having some mental health on the Twitter issue that you're thinking about it, uh, I would say, are you Melissa? Yeah. Melissa? Melissa. I go Melissa, Melissa. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we work closely with, with her. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just sending her one of the PI, and we work very close. Mm -hmm. um, and then thinking about if there is a way that could be something that we can do it together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and again, it doesn't hurt to ask because there is some opportunities that we don't. I've, I've been in, in this office three years now, and the more I've been there, the more I've learned if I don't ask. When I ask questions, I say, oh, no, and why? And then, oh, and then there is some, oh, maybe it's me yet. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, because it's so big and there is so many different mechanisms, so I would encourage. To, to talk to her and we can talk because I, I am very close with Melissa and Ish, and I can put to be thinking about that. Just clarification, that P32, that is a part of the parent P32 and not a specific P32 that was released by NIMA, correct? Uh, that I don't remember. I'm not. I'm not gonna work with the training. Mm -hmm. uh, so and I, I, I know somebody was asking also about information about training, and I can give you some slides about every, all the information that we have in training. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, in fact, I can show you a website when you go to the web at NIH, and they they develop like you know, set it up an NIH website about training. They're very helpful. Um, but I'm not so sure about that. And issue is the one who will run all the training grants. And those are the only the training grants, again, those are the grants only for that have any implementation time. Mm -hmm. The other ones I'm not including here. Mm -hmm. I just don't have a link to yeah, I guess a related question just in terms of you know, comorbid uh, mental health issues with, let's say, cardiovascular or, or renal mm -hmm. or diabetes um, or infectious. Is it advisable, again, to go through NIMH or to go through those other disease specific entities or to do some sort of I don't know, how, how, how would you advise the approach to That's a great question. Every now and then we will have RFAs out. In fact, I remember we, I oversaw one that cardiovascular, looking at cardiovascular risk for young kids taking antipsychotics. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a way to work. In fact, we've not, we worked with uh, Jake Silly at NSWI and some of her team to help you know, create some of the language in the LA to the national line. So um, there's ways that we sometimes can that. But I don't think there's funding opportunity now, but I see if there's spaces in some of the um, areas of interest where you can kind of manipulate and play with and put a specific newspaper together and call whichever institute you think you can do that as a primary mm -hmm. and see if it is, it is their interest in that. Um, and if it doesn't work for us, uh, you know, we can make suggestions about uh, you know, other institutes for the design and I to be to see, you know, talk to these folks and see if there's a way this could be developed. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you, you're finding an, an area of public health interest that needs to be addressed, this is the beauty about NIH, and I was just talking to a panel about this, is that we really do believe that we are going to settle down, we are here to help, but we feel like it, we are the jewel of the England and actually we would consider them. Because we're really flexible. We really are wanting to solve the problems of the world of public health. And if we can't do it the traditional way, what's another way to address this? We have a lot of folks at NIH that are really dedicated to this. Um, I'm not saying more so than any other agency, but I look for it right now. I, I found that to be true. Um, we really want to see how, do, how can we do this? So if you're interested, we'll try to find out. And then we need to also, if you're paying for a parent's grant, 
uh, with the SK and with the IEG of primary. But uh, if you have any mental health also, they can talk to us if you are also planning for a mental health. Sometimes there is two uh, institutes who can help the fund. Maybe one, that the other one. So that's something that can happen. But if you're, and of course, of course she was saying, as still we have like mental health, CBD, uh, or, and that's not a real world, right? Uh, so we can only fund mental health, right? That's like the, the major, the main outcome. Right, yeah. But I would say that that one of my calls, that one thing that I'm in, in, in the group mental health arena that I would like to explore and push agenda is just a comorbidity. Um, so that's one thing that we're thinking about is how, because there is huge need on this. And then, in fact, like, you know, I put a GACC there, Global Alliance for Common Disease, and that's where we met, right? Um, and then for those who are not familiar, the Global Alliance for Common Disease is a, is a initiative that's going on for many years. Um, and finally, mental health was a call two years ago. And now there are 37 uh, studies being founded around the world. GACD is being founded by different schools around the world, you know, like China, Japan, uh, UK, US, NIH, um, Brazil, and I guess that's right. I don't, I don't know all of them. But we, NIH just had four of them that are just been funded. But there were 37 NIH uh, mental health, uh, most of them to medication science. So that's another source that I think with working in mental health. It's a very nice to take a look what they're doing. 37 new studies in implementation, most of them implementation science along the board. Uh, and a lot of the JCD in different areas also, right? Mm -hmm. There's an implementation plan. But I would encourage you to talk to us. I want to build on that because um, how do we as investigators then um, help sort of promote this interinstitutional conversation? Because I had one, I had after, um, I got a score on a grant, for example, that actually had over my presentation at the I and GI. Um, and was told, you know, you needed to actually up front say that you wanted both institutes to look at this. You're sort of attached program officer ahead of time. So, you know, it sounds like the investigator has to actually kind of tee it up to the institute that we're sending something in that might be, might overlap. Right. Um, and one or both, or one or the other, or both, we want to get this work funded. You may want to, you know, so is it, should we say something in the cover letter? Like, this, what, do you, what, what do you say about that? Well, ideally, you want to contact the program officer before you get to that right. point. Because this way, you know, the, the other thing is we have a lot of chance and I wish he and I work here. You know? mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's about 40 of us on it now. Right. So, we do talk to each other. And I think as we were talking before, there's about, I think, 15 suits that really do fun. We have more, you know, um, a substantial in that portfolio. So there's a number of us that know each other. Um, so that when you talk to the program officer, they'll we'll say, this isn't the right home for us. But you go to so and so. And then you figure out how to sculpt your application to fit the primary uh, mission with maybe some other comorbidity issues or areas that you're addressing. Um, but then this, so we can talk and try to figure out who do you want to put on this cover letter. Just now, just because you put it on the cover letter, that doesn't mean the CSR mm -hmm. is going to mirror that. But it's a, it, it, it's a way to, um, to at least try to set it up that way. They are the final arbitrators of the program. Just a very quick practical question related to that. And I,
the training plan that I mean, that's the video, and most some of the listeners are sort of overhauled and so she talks to the video. But one of the challenges, um, so when, when we're meeting with some of our collaborators and staff in the English, another challenge is that, for example, in Uganda, like the population growth is like a million people every year. And just talking about it, the clinical workload of patient numbers increases a lot. And so thinking about the training or capacity building plans, a lot of don't blend it from research perspective. But in the developing country, most of it is, is like people are being blend, and they still feel that it's a practice. They always doing a lot of practice. It's kind of like the third place between them. So much from the existing practice and think about building the capacity for research. And so those are kind of mixed with further CNI kind of research and we need to some guidance, but it's those kind of that we want to develop those kind of capacity for the approach. And so and so the other question is maybe like how can we how to build capacity in the research, you know, research. One when we feel research capacity, when do we feel um, service capacity, right? And and as I say, NIH is a research mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. We don't fund service, right? right. Uh, service in the US is there is um like um Samsung. Samsung. Yeah, yeah, right. So and again, we we, we we understand that's important, yeah. but that's not our mission. So we, we cannot use our pay dollar funder, pay dollar to pay for that. What we can do, and we think it's needed, and it can help to, to help to uh, increase this uh, service, is to, to build a research capacity that will be able to, to answer the major questions at that place, right? Um, and that's the way we can do it. Uh, but but there is no way that NIH can fund yeah. this uh, service. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because folks get confused about that all the time. We are interested in developing and testing. Whereas then once you find this is great resources out there, SAMHSA and CDC and other, you know, uh, research and children's family, they can do demonstration projects and program evaluation, push this out, they support that they should be tested, you know. But we're interested in developing the So that's you know, that's the difference in the outreach. That's why it's really a research service and not service. You can do service and research, but not and if that's part of the you know, like process. Well, you're testing an, an implementation strategy and pushing it out. Are you doing, like, uh, you know, are you testing a learning collaborative and trying to build a coalition in your community? And what are those unique pieces? Are they addressing, you know, a uh, shared perspective? So that's your target. Would you be trying to enhance shared perspective among different multidisciplinary groups? And then how are you measuring it? What's the instrument you're using? And how's that because your outcome which is better? Because this person can predict it. So that's kind of like the way we work. But once you test it, then you say, oh yeah, we're well, going to work in SAMHSA with the test of the program evaluation. And then we want to know what maybe there's a new component you can tinker with to enhance better community knowledge. And in mm -hmm. the global arena, what we are encouraging with our PI is also is to connect with the policy makers, local policy makers, to make sure also how how to we scale up. And in fact, there's this is big 11 plus that going on, and they call scaling up evidence-based integration. So as one of the one of the pieces of it is how to engage to what are the needs for the policy makers for to make sure that fine, make sure not, but at least help you that to, to move forward. Those specific areas that 
each institute is interested in, there's some neat stuff going on out there. So we floated these broad funding announcements, funding opportunity announcements, and that's where you see this you know, the internship, investigator initiates the internship after you complete. Again, you follow up like the R1 12 pages, R3 and 4 is 12 pages, R21 or R3 is 6 pages. So then you pitch your, 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 your study. But remember, your, your, if you go to that parent announcement, figure out when institutes going to go to the option for that option. It's the same process, it's just you pick a different one. And then she will show you the, our mission and our strategic objective. See if your goal matches those things that there is one of them is going to be seen in all those. And if not, the other is because that's, that's what driven our kind of be able to uh, access your, 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 your education. So I have a question. And in two years from now, who of you are going to apply? Well, what is the first trip up here for us? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you want to see that? Anybody thinking of a problem? Yeah. I would say because yeah. 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 The 10th anniversary mm -hmm. uh, global mental health conference, and it was like uh, two weeks ago. Oh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I feel like well, back 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 that it was a week ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they were there, yeah, yeah. and then we invite you to all three, and it's um, and it's a way to interact with all the different kind of people who are global mental health. Yeah. Extraordinary meetings, really, yeah. and free, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You did see it, it wasn't just free time, it wasn't anything. Thank you everyone for coming. This is going to be our final meeting and then we'll start up again.